Today, I want to find out, can we beat Elden Ring as a Tree Sentinel? So just to kind of lay out the rules for this challenge, we can only use armor and equipment that the Tree Sentinel would be able to use. So we have the Tree Sentinel Helm, Armor, Gauntlets, Greaves, and then we also have the Earth Tree Great Shield and the Golden Halberd plus 10. And considering that we're on New Game plus 5, I'm also allowing myself to use a Finger Seal plus 25. The only spells that I'll be running though are Flame Grant Me Strength and Golden Vow, which I really don't even need to have Golden Vow on because the Golden Halberd, its special ability is to grant you golden vow every time that you click l2 slash lt my talismans i don't exactly have optimized i'm not sure what talismans would be good for this build right now i have the dragon crest great shield talisman on which i know that one would be good along with the earth tree's favor plus two but for the other two i'm not too sure like we have carrion filigree crest which i kind of like having that on because i do end up using a good bit of fp with this build however i do feel like there could maybe be something else there and then this one i i know for a fact i don't need this one the shard of alexander so if you have a good recommendation of what i could replace that with i'd love to know if you guys want to peek at my stats well then you can just kind of pause and look at them over there i again i'm level 234 we're on like new game plus five and i know this is going to be controversial but i will be allowing myself to use mimic tier if i see it needed i'm gonna try to beat most of the bosses without summons but if i get to a point where i'm like dude this is ridiculous like with the gods can duo then i'm gonna use a mimic i'm sorry by the way happy saint patrick's day if you're watching this on march 17th i don't know if you guys can see it but i got like a star wars shirt on sorry this looks really weird i don't know how else to show it to you guys though but yeah that's my saint patrick's day shirt you'll probably see it drooping off of me because that's just how i am i like wearing baggy clothes now you guys are probably wondering why i'm all the way up at the altus plateau and unfortunately i couldn't just start like a fresh save to do this i didn't even have the tree sentinel armor i thought that i did but i actually only had the draconic tree sentinel armor so i had to come all the way up here and then i had to go into however you say that hero's grave and i had to deal with the stupid carts that come down you have to like run around them and hit this fire statue to get them to stop moving it was really annoying but i got it done oh and don't even don't even get me started on the platforming I had to do. Thankfully, I didn't even die once when I was doing the platforming, but it did get my pulse going. So yeah, unfortunately, we aren't starting like from the beginning of the game because I had to get up here in the first place to actually acquire this. However, if you guys want to see like a quote unquote complete playthrough, I technically could loop the game and get through this playthrough and then start another one and then beat the bosses that we would have beaten up to this point. I have a feeling nobody's really going to care about that though. So I'm just planning on like finishing this playthrough and then just starting like a fresh role play before we go into new game plus six. I have a couple ideas for ones I want to do. I want to do one as Millennia. I want to do one as Ronnie. And then I want to do one as Ranala. This is also going to be like a multi-episode mini-series. As you can see here, I went back to the round table hold. And then I ended up getting the Queen's Crescent Crown along with the rest of Ranala's armor. Anyways, here we are at Lane Dell Royal Capital, man. I, I always get like the biggest, goofiest smile on my face every time that I walk out here. And it's just, it's such a beautiful view. And then me as the Tree Sentinel, the golden armor. It just, it, you know what? I'm actually going to screenshot this. This is sick. Let's see. I haven't gotten to do too much testing. How much damage am I doing without any buff? 972. You know what? That's actually pretty good because we have, if my math is correct, 657 physical damage and then roughly 294 holy damage with a 100 critical. And then on top of that, obviously, I can do the whole golden vow thing if I need some bonus damage. And since I leveled this up all the way up to plus 10, it has a B scaling and strength and only a D scaling and faith and dex. So my faith and dex stats really aren't that high. As you can see, I got a 24 in dex and 40 in faith. I honestly might do a bit of readjustment, put some more into like dex and faith because even though it's a D scaling every stat helps and then i have an 80 in strength and thankfully despite the fact that i'm using all this chunky armor thanks to all the talismans i have on i'm still able to quick roll so that's a good thing lord knows playing elden ring with a heavy roll that's just no there's no way i'd be able to do that also if this is your first time seeing one of my videos i am actually planning on making a lot more elden ring videos so hey if that interests you i upload every single day at 7 p.m i'm not saying every single day is going to be an elden ring video but at least every other day right now i'm also in the middle of another series where i'm tackling the dark souls 2 dlc for the first time so i'm kind of bouncing back and forth between this and that i also run a discord server and that's linked down in the description if you'd like to be a part of that community and get in touch with me directly i'm active over there a good bit and on a daily basis and those guys usually end up knowing about videos that are coming out way in advance before anybody else all right i'm done shameless plugging i promise now if you've been watching the channel for a while then you would know i'm absolutely terrible when it comes to my sense of direction and finding out where to go and land out specifically so this is definitely going to be a trip as I try to find my way through here. I think I'm going the right way, but I'm not entirely sure. If memory serves me correct, I think we have to go up this way. I really can't remember. I'm just trying to get to like the main bosses of the area. It has been so refreshing playing Elden Ring again. Again, for any new viewers, I made a ton of videos on Elden Ring. Back around the time that it was winning game of the year, I made about 50 videos on it. And since I upload daily and you do the math, yeah, it was basically like two months straight of just like back to back to back to back Elden Ring. I ended up taking a break for a little while. I went and made 
made like a Bloodborne series, as well as catching up on some other From Software games and DLCs and such that I missed. And honestly, it just, it feels so good to be back. I'm definitely going the wrong way. How am I lost, man? I've beaten this game so many times at this point, and yet I can never find my way. Wait, now it's coming back to me. I think we need to get over to the Dragon Wing, because I'm pretty sure we have to like climb up the Dragon Wing, and then that takes us to where we need to go, I think. Maybe I gotta go out this way. Yes, this looks familiar. Yeah, it just feels so good to be back. I'm kind of glad that I took a break for a bit because on my Xbox, I've also been doing like just the new game Zero One in my free time just to kind of relearn the game and re-experience it. And I've honestly really been enjoying it. I'm also going for the quote unquote platinum over on Xbox, even though it's not really a platinum, you know, you just get all the achievements. But I figured, hey, I already did it on PlayStation. Might as well get it done over on Xbox as well. Fun fact about me, Elden Ring was actually my first platinum trophy and it's still my only platinum trophy to this day. I haven't gotten any other platinum trophies before. The only thing that could come close to counting as a quote unquote platinum would be when I got all of the achievements for Resident Evil 4 on the Xbox One. But otherwise, yeah, I've never actually like platinumed any other games over here on PlayStation. Melina, my boo, she is literally my favorite waifu in the game. Like, Melina, you please marry me. I shall depart to ascertain the purpose I was given. All the maidens leave at one time or another. Well, despite the fact that I got lost for a bit, at least I finally found my way. <laughs> now, the real question is, will I be able to take on Godfrey and Morgoth? I'm sure I'll be able to take on Godfrey, no problem. But Morgoth? I haven't fought Morgoth in a while, so we'll see how this goes. I did get a bit of a warm-up this morning. When I first entered the Altus Plateau, I ended up fighting the Margit that spawns in there, and I did relatively well. I only got hit, like, four times. I also got a clip of me getting an almost flawless victory with the Draconic Tree Sentinel. I'm not sure where to insert it in this video, so I'll probably, like, throw it in and the end somewhere. Godfrey first Elden Lord. Let's see if I can take him on without any summons. I haven't dealt with any hefty Elden Ring bosses in a while, so we're gonna toss on Flame Grant Me Strength, and then we'll get the Golden Val going. Oh my god, he's hitting me already. Come on. Okay, wait. He's gotta back up. No. Oh my god, dude. I am already getting tossed around. Okay. Where is Golden Val? Thank you. Back up. Okay. You ain't that bad. Alright, we're doing decent damage. Come on. Oh. Oh. <laughs> He's a big boy. Come on. You ain't that bad. You really aren't that bad, man. You're terrible. Get good. Come on. Oh my god, he's getting good. I'm... Why am I getting obliterated right now? This guy isn't even hard. Alright, I, I... I'm abusing... I'm abusing the openings too much. Or I'm like... I'm attacking when there isn't an opening. I just... I need to slow down. Come on. Alright. Opening. Dodge. Dodge. Opening. There we go. I'm learning again. Oh, no. I should have attacked. Okay. All right. Come on, then. Whoa. Shit. <laughs> okay. No. The dance of death. Oh, no. Okay. I, I got to back up. I'm not going to die now. Okay. Heal. Hit it with the one, two. I use 60 vigor, too. Come on. Ugh, getting tossed. Heal up. Come on, Godfrey. Why am I? I keep I keep attacking at the wrong times. This is this is going way longer than I thought that it would. There we go, baby. Yeah, I'm getting back in the flow. Come on. Oh no. I frames you with me. People are probably going to laugh at me for moving so much or like moving around so much IRL. If you're new to the channel, then you're not used to that yet. I'm sorry. I have a bad tendency of doing it. It helps me stay in the flow of combat. It's really hard to explain, but... And just like that, Godfrey first Elden Lord is down. 
Dude, that got my hand sweating. That was more intense than I thought it was gonna be. I love New Game Plus. <laughs> we get like 250,000 runes just for taking out Godfrey. New Game Plus is the only time where I can comfortably walk around with like 300,000 runes and not even bat an eye. I mean, at this point, it literally takes me 452,467 runes just to level up. So needless to say, I'm not necessarily hurting for runes. And anytime that I need to purchase anything, I usually have more than enough money on hand to do so. All right, now Godfrey was just a fluke. I wonder how I'm gonna handle Morgoth. If I struggled that bad on Godfrey, I'm a little nervous, but let's see if I can take on Morgoth, the Omen King, as a tree sentinel. All right, so right off the bat, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop my, like, buffs or incantations or whatever, like, as soon as I can, so we get Flame Grammy Strength on. Switch to this. Golden Vow. And now let's see how much damage... Okay. Honestly, I fought Morgoth and Margit so many times, yet I don't know his timings. I don't know his moves. I'm very bad at this fight. I just kind of, like, wing it usually and hope that I get him down. Okay, come on. I gotta, I gotta learn the openings, which with Morgoth, there's very few. I have a bad tendency of spam dodging with him, too. I gotta work on that. I gotta learn when to actually dodge. That one's always tricky as well. From a DPS perspective, it would probably be better to do R1s, but I think with how limited my openings are on this boss, I'm probably just gonna stick to R2s. I've never used a Halberd before, so I really don't know its moveset and its timings all that well yet. I've literally only fought Dracon and Tree Sentinel and Godfrey with it, along with a few other, like, mob enemies throughout the world. Oh, shoot. Oh! Getting tossed already! Oh, I'm so terrible! Oh my god, and there we go, there's the first death. I was heavily considering using like two halberds in this build and then just like jump lunging or jump attacking every single enemy, but I felt like that was a little overkill and it wouldn't be in character because the tree sentinel doesn't use two golden halberds, he only uses the one halberd and then the shield. I could potentially try to make this like partly a block build and put on the talisman that increases my guard counters and then use the big great Urtree shield since it has a pretty good poise to it. I'm actually really curious about that now. So we're going to take off the Shard of Alexander and I want to try to see what it would be like to just rely on guard counters because I've heard of players that just genuinely do that and having it work for them. All right, now keep in mind, I do have Golden Vow and Flame Grimmy Strength on. However, I do want to try this to see like, would that actually be a viable build or strategy? I've never done like shield playthroughs or anything like that on this game. Okay, Th this is a little tricky already. See, yeah, uh, he moves around so much. I don't even know if that would be a good strategy for this fight. Oh yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna try to block that hammer. Okay, I'm learning the timings a little bit. Hit. Yeah, he jumps away so fast. I think I just gotta stick with doing the good old dodges. I don't really see the shield being a good strategy here. Okay, doing about 780 damage for a light attack. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna stick to the heavies here even though it takes me ages to get it going. Oh no, I did not mean to use that. I was trying to use my healing. Come on. Okay. My timing's a little scuffed, but... Oh no! I was out of stamina. That's, that doesn't happen very often in this game. You see the size of that stamina bar? Oh no. Alright. Ow. Oh no. Run! Run away! Alright, now I'm gonna reapply Golden Vow at least. Oh wait, why'd I do it that way? I didn't even have to do it that way. I do have the thing on my Halberd. Oh my god! <laughs> he did the lunge attack! Oh god. Oh god, this boss, man. Wait, I, for I forgot about your input reads. You know every time that I go to heal. Ow! You dick! Fuck, why do you hate me so much, man? What did I do to you? Just a friendly buff Asian boy, man. I'm just, I'm roaming through the lanes between. I didn't know I was doing anything wrong, man. I've always wondered what the characters in these Souls games are thinking. Like, they just walk through these mystical walls that they can't see through, and then on the other side, they're greeted with death. And obviously, deaths are canonical in the lore, so these guys just die time and time and time and time again, and they don't have an option because we're the player. We're controlling them. They just have to deal with the death. Our Souls characters are just stuck in this purgatory of endless death, and we keep doing it to them. Does nobody else think of this? Say what you will about this decision. I'm using a mimic tier. I'm sorry. I just can't adjust to his timings. His timings are something else entirely. Like any other boss in the game, okay, whatever. I'll try to do it no summons. But like Margit and Morgoth, it is just so hard trying to learn his timings, man. He is through and through like a nameless king type boss. See, but now that I have a mimic, now things might be a bit too easy. So now I feel really conflicted about that decision. Come on. 
that's the tricky thing with like spirit summons in this game because like sometimes they're nice and it almost feels like not necessary but like you, you sometimes you almost feel like you need it with how hard these bosses are at least when it comes to their like timings and trying to learn openings and all that but then on the other hand sometimes they eat too much aggro like this i just i don't know i feel like a happy medium would be if from software could find a way to maybe balance the ai when you do use a summon like I don't know, every other attack, it could switch between you guys. I'm not sure, just something. I'm not, like, again, I don't really know what they could do to balance it out, but I don't know. If they have, like, an Elden Ring 2 where they end up bringing Spirit Summons back, I would definitely wish for them to improve the AI so that it's not just either A, the bosses feel a little too hard at times almost, or B, it's just like this where he hasn't even tried to attack me once. But, anyway, with that being said, Margot, the Omen King, is down, which means in the next episode, we'll be heading to the mountaintops of the Giants, and we'll be fighting Fire Giant. And I'm not sure if you could tell it in the tone of my voice, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not very excited about that, if I'm gonna be honest. Touch the wall of thorns. Impenetrable thorns refuse all. None may enter the Erd Tree. Not even a tree sentinel? Homie, I am scattered all over the world. I am doing your bidding. Let me in. Let me just say, even though I'm on a PS4, can we just take a minute to admire how the light reflects off the tree sentinel's armor? Like, I bet if I was on a PS5 or Series X, this would just look even better. But anyways, I'm gonna rest at this side of grace, and then in the next episode, we have a long trek ahead of us through the mountaintops of the giants before we finally get to fire giant and take him down. But anyway, as always, a shout out to the patrons and channel members, Karma's Fave Grandma, Lobity Tab, Big Daddy Maddie, Tulip Source Rex, Ray Zach, Polar, Ray, De Webster, Lamas, Bianca, Spurgatory, Dripper Cassant, Mellow Last King, Computer Magic, Mason Irving, TJY15, Flynn the 71, Aaron Reynolds, and Unknown. Thank you guys for watching. Have an amazing day. Stay beautiful. I love you all. And remember, don't go hollow. Peace.